This over here is an RTX 4060 Ti with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. And this beauty over there is an RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Double the amount. Is it worth it over the 8 gigabyte version? What's the performance difference? And as a creator, I might have some shocking results for you. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. I'm completely going to skip the specs part of this because there is nothing different about these two cards apart from the, the VRAM. Now, these two cards are from separate manufacturers and there might be slight differences in clock speeds but that's within the margin of error in different benchmarks so that doesn't count either but there is a big difference which is the price point because this card here compared to that one can be around hundred dollars more expensive when you get that one there depending if you want the pro art version that's the nicest looking one then it might be a little bit more expensive than this one but very interesting thing about these gpus is that when you buy any of the pro art products especially this gpu as well you get extra three months for free adobe creative cloud membership now if you are a creator and you're already paying for that or plan to pay for this this values at roughly around 180 dollars 60 dollars per month 59.99 so considering that the pro art cards can actually have a 180 dollar discount which actually makes the pro art for creators a lot cheaper than this normal non-pro art with 8 gigabyte version and in a moment you're going to see how the 16 gigabyte is going to be very interesting as well but for the pricing, I thought I'll let you know that first. And it's the same thing when we're talking about RTX 4060, because there's a 4060 uh, Pro Art version as well. And when you look at the Pro Art version of that one, then you're going to get the 4060 about half the price when looking at the Pro Art version. There is actually a point of looking at these Pro Art GPUs. They're beautiful. But check out the latest pricing in the description below. I'm going to leave the cards down there. And did you know they do also a 4080 in the same design? So we're going to be looking at the benchmarks as well as how much VRAM did we use in this benchmark to see if the VRAM is bottleneck in that benchmark. First, the Geekbench 6, we can see that both of these cards, the 18 and 16 gigabytes, are within margin of error. Interesting, the 16 gigabyte actually performs well 3% slower in the Vulcan scores, but that is within margin of error. If you know how Geekbench 6 does Vulcan scores, they go a little bit all over the place, so they're exactly the same in Geekbench. Moving on to Photoshop, and here, we can see that the overall score is about 0.2% faster in the 16 gigabyte version, which means about the same again. But the underneath scores are a little bit more interesting. The GPU score is about 7.5% faster for some reason, and the filter score is about 3.2%. So the filter score, we're not gonna notice the difference in there really, but the GPU score, we can. So if you're looking at the VRAM utilization for that, benchmark then we can see that the Puget Bench for Photoshop actually used about 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM which means that VRAM is not the bottleneck in here and the GPU score difference is kind of interesting. I'd say these cards perform exactly the same in Photoshop. Now Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. Here we can see the 16 gigabyte version and 8 gigabyte version are within 1% of each other so they don't make any difference at all if you're using video editing in Premiere Pro. But there is a if we're looking at the actual memory utilization in Premiere Pro for this benchmark, we can see that the maximum we used there was 8.6 gigabytes of VRAM utilized. So the 8 gigabyte version actually was a slight bottleneck in terms of video editing. And if you're using slightly more complex timelines, perhaps more than 4K video editing or a little bit more stuff going on on the timeline, you can easily see past 10 gigabytes used of VRAM, which actually makes me recommend the 16 gigabyte over the eight gigabyte, especially because you can get this a little bit cheaper for video editing. And it is actually better. The 16 gigabytes is much better in video editing because you need a little bit more than eight gigabytes if you don't do just basic things. For just basic things, eight gigabytes is completely fine. Moving on to After Effects. The 16 gigabyte version is only 0.3% slower in the overall scores. Interestingly, the multi-core score is a lot faster on the 16 gigabyte, which is random because 
the multi-core score is actually from the CPU. Like, how good is the CPU? Both of the systems, systems are exactly the same. Well, it's the same system, just we change the cheap CPU. So interestingly, the 12900K somehow runs faster on the 16 gigabyte version compared to the 8 gigabyte. So in After Effects, we don't really see any difference again. Moving on to View Japan for DaVinci Resolve. And here the 8 and 16 gigabyte have a huge difference. And because DaVinci Resolve really can utilize the GPU and can utilize as much GPU power as you have. So we can see it's the 16 gigabyte version is about 18 to 20 percent faster in the standard and extended scores the 4k media score is about the same 8k media score is about 11 percent faster gpu effects are about the same because there we don't use as much vram but fusion score is about 32 percent faster on the 16 gigabyte version and we might say why is that then because the actual gpu power calculating is both the same but the VRAM capability of this, you know, 16 gigabyte version has just more room to play with some of the effects and doesn't bottleneck the actual calculating uh, timeline or pipeline. So there was about 12.1 gigabytes used of VRAM when completing this test, which means that the 8 gigabyte version was a huge bottleneck. And that's why we see the 16 gigabyte version a lot faster. So here, there's another tip here. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, having more VRAM is a huge thing for you and you might need more than eight gigabytes what you have. So having cards with more VRAM will just perform better because just the benchmark here will use 12 gigabytes of VRAM. If you have anything above that, it's not gonna be a bottleneck there, but in your timeline or in your workflow, you might need even more. So that's just interesting point there. Moving on to 3D. In V-Ray, we can see that the GPU CUDA score is about the same for both of them, but the RTX score is about 12% faster on the 16 gigabyte version. And we're looking at the VRAM utilization, then the CUDA used only about 3.2 gigabytes, and then the RTX one used about 5.2 gigabytes of VRAM. So neither of these cards were actually a bottleneck, but for some reason, the 16 gigabyte version performs better. Why is that? Well, I don't know. Beats me. Let me know if you can figure it out. Moving on to Blender. And here we have the 8 gigabyte version and the 16 gigabyte version. Very importantly, the 8 gigabyte version is actually using Blender 3.4. And then the 16 gigabyte version uses Blender 4.0. So the 16 gigabyte actually has newer Blender, but interestingly, the scores are actually slower on the 16 gigabyte version, about nine to 10% slower in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. Bear in mind this test samples per minute. So the more samples you can actually render through, the faster the card is. Now, when we're looking at the VRAM utilization, we can see that we only allocated about six gigabytes of VRAM for this. So the VRAM issue wasn't here apparent on neither of the cards. So the results here are just interesting. And this is something I have seen with a lot of the cards that the newer version of Blender if you're using exactly the same kind of card will perform slower so if i've taken 4060 here and actually now tested it with blender 4.0 it's actually slower the previous versions of blender i don't know why moving on to octane bench and here the 16 gigabyte version is about three percent faster looking at the utilization of vram we can see that octane bench only allocated about four gigabytes of vram so that wasn't the bottleneck in here but the 16 gigabyte version just is slightly faster not notice but slightly faster. In Redshift, the 16 gigabyte version is about 15.2% faster in the scores, and that's quite a big margin actually compared to these two cards. Looking at the actual GPU utilization, and here we can see why this is so. This Redshift benchmark actually allocated about 15 gigabytes of VRAM to the 16 gigabyte version there, which means that we pretty much used all of the VRAM on the GPU. And if you're using a 20 to 24 gigabyte version of this benchmark, it actually absolutely saturates the whole VRAM amount in there. And that's why we can see that the more VRAM you have for Redshift, it is better the way it uses for rendering. And that's why the 16 gigabyte version is better. What is the general conclusion? 
Well, in most of the applications when VRAM isn't the bottleneck, these cards perform exactly the same. But as a creator, this is where we actually need more VRAM and why this 16 gigabyte version actually makes sense for us because thank you Adobe we're gonna get this cheaper than this one if you're using Adobe and it is actually better in some of the ways more VRAM does actually matter now at the same time if you are not using Adobe products and perhaps you know you just want a little bit of a GPU maybe you're doing photo editing or something like that or something light video editing then the 8 gigabyte version honestly for you for your performance not gonna give a ton of difference but I was actually surprised that the 16 gigabyte version can be better and does perform better in some of these benchmarks there and to me if I'm building the PC like that getting a gorgeous PC black and gold like that to get a GPU like that if you're using Adobe Creative Cloud I've mentioned this so many times but it's such a good feature for example I recently bought that motherboard there because it only cost me 20 pounds for this build because I'm using Adobe Creative Cloud anyway but thanks very much for the three months off and if you have the motherboard and this uh, GPU soon there might be some other things as well like a case and uh, maybe a cooler as well then you can get a lot like a full that's four yeah so you're gonna get a full year off of adobe creative cloud which is gonna cost you extra 600 dollars more than that maybe something like that the pro art stuff actually might make a ton of sense for us as creators and i'm so glad that it looks so much better than these Zotac cards or any gamery cards like this i know this is just a gpu but if we can make a GPU nice, can we make them all looking like that? And if you do want to build yourself best bang for buck, create a PC, then the build guides are in the description below. Completely free for you. Go check them out and check whichever one you want. You know, there's one for your budget. Okay, bye-bye.